Jamboard is one of my favorite tools to use in the classroom for quick checks for understanding or formative assessments. And the first thing that you want to do is go to jamboard.com. Okay, so you don't need the HTTPS, you can type that in, but you could also just type into the Google search um, up at the top of the page, jamboard.google.com. Then what you are going to do is create a new Jamboard. And so down at the bottom of your screen, down here, you are going to see this orange circle with a plus sign. That's going to allow you to create a new Jam. Now Jamboard is a physical tool, like it's a, it's a monitor screen that you could use. They are really amazing. However, what's nice about Jamboard is you could use it on a Chromebook, the app itself. You could use it on a Chromebook, a Mac, a PC. If your students are on iPads or using a cell phone, either Android or iOS, you can download free Jamboard apps to use on those. It does not work on the internet. You need to have the app itself on um, a tablet or a phone. But what you're going to do when you're in here, you are going to notice that up at the top, there are different frames. And what the frames are is it's basically the equivalent of pages or slides in Google Slides. And so you could add more slides if you'd like. And then um, one other thing you can do is if you click on the three dots, you can duplicate slides, which is really nice. Now, on the menu here, you can choose to zoom in. You can change the background. So you can have graph paper or like grids. You could have um, ruled lines like on a piece of paper. Or here's the different types of graph paper. And you can do different colors. So depending on what you're using, you have the ability to change up the background a little bit. You could also clear the frame, and this clears everything off of the frame. Now, over on the left, you have a bunch of different tools. A pen tool allows you to write. And if you click over on the right side, you can choose marker, highlighter, or brush, and choose different colors as well. Um, if I... The next one is the eraser, which I could erase bits and pieces, or I could use clear frame. But remember, clear frame erases everything, even if I had more things than just my scribble. I have a selector tool, and this will allow me to move things when I have things on there. I have a sticky note, and the sticky note allows me to type things in. So type responses, type questions. I use this for driving questions in my science class when we're observing a new phenomena. Um, you do not know who wrote what, though. So I would always recommend that you have students start out with their initials, their name, something like that, before they type something in on their sticky note. So they can have that and then their question or whatever their re response might be. Students can change color, so you can have color codes for different types of questions you want them to ask or it can have a, um, a clear background. I'm gonna leave it as yellow and press save. Once I press save, it gives me the option automatically to have a second sticky note. And if I write my second sticky note, um, it puts it in a different spot. However, if you have multiple students all on here at the same time, generally what tends to happen is they all kind of start out in one spot. So I ask the students to move them around to different places. Now I also have the option to add images. And so you could upload images um, from the internet, from Google Drive, um, things that are recent. But you can also choose Google Image Search, which is generally what I have my students use. So I could have a picture, I type in just what I'm searching for, and I'll put this um, bird of paradise, which is kind of a fun, Word. Um, and you can resize it, you can duplicate, delete, and you can change the order to send things forward and backwards. Next is the shape tool, and the shape tool allows you to put different things. So here is a um, oval. If I want it to be a perfect circle, if I press shift at the same time I'm making it bigger, it keeps the dimensions. Actually, it's not working very well. Um, 
doing that, but generally in Google Tools it allows you to keep dimensions, but it didn't seem to be working for me this time. To click on, um, to get different shapes, I click on the side and I can choose different types of shapes that I want to include. And then I could also add just text. And so I could add a title, I could put prompts and um, different things that I might want my students to add and I can change the color of that so I can have a title. And then I have a laser tool. And this laser tool allows me to kind of, as I'm talking about things with students or showing them things or as the students are presenting what they might have added, they can um, point things out and then just to get people's eyes in the right spot. Now, you might use this as something that you want students, like as a four corner activity, or you want students to put specific questions in specific spaces. What I like to do, I'm gonna clear the frame, I like to give my students maybe a topic. So this could be instructions or a title that I have for my students. But then I might want things in particular spots. So I might want to have like squares where all the students put a specific type of thing, type of response in this box. And I can give this one a title as well. So I'm going to add a title box. And this could be like option one to move. Option one, I'm going to click on this little arrow and just it allows me to drag it. I could also click up here to rotate if I need to. And then I might have a box with option two. So I could duplicate this, move it over, and say option two. Now, this doesn't allow you to save things, like lock them onto the screen like you could do in a Google slide and students could actually move things around on this. There's a kind of a trick that you could use so that it prevents students from deleting things. They could always click clear frame and then you're kind of out of luck. But um, a trick so students don't move things is if you get like a shape like a square and you put that square and you make it so that it is clear. Oops, I don't want that box here. Let's see, here's the box. I'm going to make it transparent. And I'm going to put it over here and I'm going to make it as big as I can. I'm going to make it so it kind of goes off the screen. So I have this box here, and that box is on top. So I can't actually grab and move option unless I move this other box out of the way or change the order. But adding that extra box kind of is a way to help prevent students from moving around your um, template that you've created. Sometimes people will create two squares that are clear. So I'm going to go into here, make it transparent, um, and that could help prevent, again, students from doing things that they should not be doing um, to your background. Now, when you're ready to give this to your students, you're going to click share. And you want to change so that anyone with the link can edit because you want your students to put post-it notes or whatever you might want to add on here. And so now, let's say I had in the instructions for students to, you know, ask questions and it either goes in box one or box two, then the students can go in and add their sticky notes and put them in the right spot, or they could add images, whatever you want. Now, if I want to create multiples of these, I can just go up to my bar up here and extend this and I can duplicate it. And maybe I have one slide per team and kids are in breakout rooms working on um, their team's, uh, not page, not slide, their um, team's frame. And you'll notice that I have an extra frame over here that's kind of blank. I could go and delete that. 
But anytime anyone goes and clicks here, it's going to create another frame over on the right hand side. So I'd have a frame three. You want to make sure you title it as well. And then you are just going to share this with your students. Right now it's public on the web. And so you would give this link to your students. You can click copy link. Um, what's nice about this is it also works if you wanted to have students make a copy of this and have their own version of this. So what you would do is when you share the link with them, you're going to find the last forward slash. So that's this forward slash right here. I'm going to leave that forward slash, but I'm going to take everything after it and I'm going to delete it and I'm going to put copy in its place. Then what that is going to do is when you share this link with your students that has copy instead, it's going to force them to make their own copy of this. So if you wanted it as a template to give to your students, you can do that. Now, I'm just going to show you a few examples of ways that you could use this in your classroom. You could use it as a mood meter. And for this, what students would do is they would grab a circle and they would take this circle and they would move it and put it where they kind of feel they are for that day. Another example, um, this was from a course that I took at the Exploratorium and we were making models of different types of leaves that could um, help protect the plant as um, the temperature on Earth is rising. And so we took, we made models of kind of what we were going to do for our experiment. And then we like took pictures, we had descriptions, and then there are a couple of different like versions of an experiment that we might build. And so you can see lots of different ideas here. Another way that this has been done, as I mentioned in my science class, I use it for driving questions. I'm trying to find an example if I have it in this account. This is not my school account, oh, but I do have a sample here. So this was um, a driving question board that I used for my science class, and students had just kind of observed some articles, some graphs, and data, and they were asking questions, and they posted their questions on this board. And then what I did is I went through and I organized it, the questions into different categories. And this is shared so that it's, I only have view only access in this account, but so you don't see the menu on the side. Um, but you can see that things were kind of organized afterwards, and then there's some weird thing in here that I forgot to delete. Um, but those are some just different ideas that you could use for students to generate questions, take pictures of things and share them. And it's just a really great way to get quick checks for understanding from all of your students. And it's a collaborative workspace where they can even draw on it. So for math, you can have students write out problems. What's really great is that if you have this on a tablet and you have like, like I have my iPod and an Apple Pencil, I can just sign in and I can be live and I could be writing on the Jamboard on my iPad. And on my Zoom, when I'm sharing my screen, I could be sharing my computer screen and my students are going to see what I do on the iPad because whatever changes I do are live on the document because it's shared with both of my accounts. And so it's a really great way to um, just write on it and then share the screen that's on your computer um, that you're running your Zoom or your Google Meet through.